Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at our terrace with Insoft Melian. I'm going to talk today about accelerating IP reuse. Insoft, devices are becoming much more complicated. The market windows are shrinking. What's the problems that you're starting to encounter with using IP and reusing IP? Yes, so uh, we know that we saw that uh, with the, our customer, the uh, designers are struggling having more and more content to be integrated from different sources. They have the third party IPs, they have the internal IPs, uh, new or legacy, that they need to be integrated all together and to uh, ensure that uh, the interface of HIB will be compatible with the rest of uh, the system. And uh, also, uh, we know that. Uh, having this complexity, the uh, uh, size also of the S SOC is becoming uh, more and more uh, uh, large. Uh, so uh, the traditional uh, uh, solution that they are using with uh, manual processes, manual scripting, this will uh, lead to some uh, misalignment uh, to uh, errors actually. And so we will need more time to address these errors, fix them. Uh, so you will... Uh, have a longer time to market to be able to have your product pushed out at the end. This has been a problem with IP though from the start, right? What's different now? The difference now is you will have more than 1000 IB to be integrated in your SOC. So you need to find some, to put in place some automation to be able to shorten this integration time and at the same time ensure the quality of what will be generated uh, at the end. Let's take a closer look. Sure. In SOP, what are we looking at? This is the flow actually that we are using to uh, package uh, the IP using our solution, Mazilem uh, uh, packaging with the different step. So uh, we start first with importing uh, the description of the IP. Uh, you, we can read directly the RTL description of the IP, whether it is in a very log or a system very log. Of course, we can uh, read the, the legacy and old version, uh, older version of uh, IP exec 2009 and 2014 and now 2022, and the description of the protocols. Uh, so the tool will generate automatically uh, the uh, IP exec 2022 description of uh, these uh, elements. So we'll have the description of the ports, description of the parameters. This will help to the configuration of uh, the IP when it will be instantiated. Uh, the ports, if you have specific protocol that uh, are used in this IP, uh, we can actually map them into bus interfaces. Uh, the bus interfaces actually are very helpful because it will uh, help you to uh, make the integration much easier. We will have uh, like 50x uh, less uh, connection. It will help also to have a, a reliable integration because when we will be uh, connecting one target to one initiator, we will be with the IP exact standard to be sure that these two bus interfaces are compatible. So this will help also to detect uh, error early in, in the process and not uh, be a, a blocker later. So you've got two ma major problems here, right? One is you have a lot more data that has to be moved these days than in the past, and it has to be moved faster than it did in the past. The second thing is you have a lot more complexity, you have potential physical effects that you have to contend with. And you really need to understand all that upfront as you put this together because you've got a lot more density in these designs. Yes, uh, actually the, uh, the, uh, the benefits of the packaging of the IP is the more information you will put, you will put in this packaging, uh, the better and the m most benefits you will have at the end because this information has been validated so the integration will be reliable and at the end you will, you will have a better uh, integration uh, and better quality of uh, your design. So uh, on, on, on top of these elements that I described, uh, earlier with the parameters and the bus interface, we have also the description of the memory map. This will help to generate all the collateral needed like a VC header, UVM RAL that will be used for the verification. We have also the views uh, which reference uh, the file sets and these are very helpful actually because it will help you to have in one description of your IP uh, the uh, different 
uh, usage that can be done uh, uh, with the different team that are working on the same project. So we can have use like for the uh, simulation uh, that will help you to have all the files uh, needed uh, to run a specific simulation. You can have use for the emulation, for the synthesis, and all this is in one single source of truth specification uh, that will help you at the end to have consistent data that could be uh, used uh, without any problem at the end. And one of the big changes here is that in the past you were pretty much using block by block and integrating that, that kind of IP, but now you may be integrating entire subsystems into these complex packages, right? Exactly. With IP exact, actually, there, there are different levels of abstraction that can be done. We can we can work at the IP level, at leaf level, what we call it leaf level. We can also work at subsystem level, top level, chiplet level. So the we can work at any level that the team would like to focus on. How much of this is standard based? Has IP exact and some of the other protocols have they all kept up with what needs to be done in these designs, or is there still a lot of we need to manually tinker with this? If there is some custom flows that you want to put in place or custom feature that you want to put in place, IP exact is good for that because it's an XML uh, format. So you can put, uh, you can add attributes, you can add metadata that you can uh, retrieve at the end and script based on the values of, uh, of uh, this information. This is still complicated stuff. What sort of problems do engineers run into working with this? You've done a good job in terms of of identifying a lot of the problems, but it's still never that simple, right? Exactly. As, as you need sometimes to address uh, different needs from uh, from the team, so you can you have to build sometimes the design by layer to address uh, the power, to address uh, the GFX needs. So these still need to be defined with the architecture team and uh, put the strategy on place to address uh, these these pains. Basically, it's got to be integrated with a much larger flow of what's going on here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. And you need also a connectivity, an assembly solution that will help you to put, to put all these IP all together, elaborate uh, your system and validate it at the end. Do engineers need to keep learning stuff as they go along, or is it still pretty much the same tool that they've been working with, only now it can do more? This tool doesn't require uh, an expertise in IP exact. For example, we have everything handled. Uh, we have lots of API that will help you to do uh, the uh, packaging and even with uh, the, the rest of the machine and platform, do the uh, integration and manage your register uh, very easily, very uh, simply, it's uh, seamless actually. And uh, also, uh, with the new IP exact uh, version that uh, that uh, we are supporting with uh, this uh, uh, new uh, product, it's m very easier to address uh, the system very log specific uh, feature like the structure, the system very log interfaces. All these are now natively supported by the new version of uh, of uh, the uh, standard, and uh, it will help to have uh, mm. to streamline the integration process. How has IP exact evolved to make all this work? Uh, actually, the new version of uh, IP Exec 2022 is uh, addressing uh, m more and more limitations that uh, have been seen in the previous uh, version of the standard. So uh, we have uh, a better definition of the uh, expression using a system very log. In IP Exec 2009, we are using XPath, which was not very user friendly. Uh, we have the management of the cat catalog that uh, are uh, now uh, handled uh, natively uh, with the, this new version. We have uh, uh, a better um, uh, support of uh, system uh, very log with uh, all the uh, new uh, uh, the, the struct, uh, the system very log interfaces. We have also the uh, specific elements like the type definition that could be uh, used uh, to define and describe the memory map, uh, having this kind of uh, template that could be used from one project uh, to another. Uh, there is uh, actually uh, more and more feature, the power uh, domain that uh, could be also handled, uh, the analog and mixed si signal uh, properties. So yeah, it's a more complete, more straightforward uh, standard uh, that uh, um, help to address the complexity uh, of uh, the new SOCs. And this is no longer just a planar SOC that we're dealing with for the most part with a lot of these complex uh, IPs. Now it, what it is is a 
complex uh, assembly, multi-die assembly. Uh, you've got uh, advanced packaging of different types, and a lot of these are customized too, right? Yes, exactly. So uh, uh, for the case, for example, for the uh, multi-die, uh, you, you, you can define that with uh, a, a disintegration of your SOC, having uh, assembling all the elements together and would like to partition uh, based on a, a specific uh, constraint that you defined uh, uh, through the arch architecture, or you can have different uh, uh, chiplet that you want to, to uh, aggregate all together and uh, define your new system. So the IP exec, you can, uh, as I explained earlier, you can define a different level of abstraction. And uh, from the moment you define the, uh, this um, description of uh, the uh, uh, interconnection that you want to put in place between the uh, different chiplet, uh, you can put all this together, validate your system map and uh, validate your system. Does this change at all as we move from 2.5D to full 3D IC? Uh, not really, because these uh, internship can be uh, uh, modelized and uh, can be described in a higher level of abstraction using the IP execs, so there is uh, no problem with that. But you may have multiple knocks in one of these as well, too, right? It may not just be one, because you've got uh, GALs, uh, globally asynchronous, locally synchronous. You may have to move data in different directions. Right, th that's true. Uh, you can have multi knock. You have you can have a composition of knocks. So uh, these are problems that uh, that we are already uh, handled with uh, with uh, our solution. So uh, you can uh, still connect uh, these knocks all together and uh, create very easily your uh, system high level. Do those knocks have to be uh, coherent, or can they operate independently? There is no limitation regarding uh, the uh, intent uh, the, the, that is behind uh, this specific uh, IP. So with the, uh, when you package your, your IP, as all the information is um, uh, here to define the boundary of your IP or uh, what is needed to uh, have a seamless integration at the end, the, uh, the real behavior uh, inside this is uh, actually a uh, hide it. So this complexity uh, with coherent, no coherent is a uh, hide it with the package, uh, with the packaging of the IP. When you think about an, an SOC and actually even a uh, advanced package that's multi-die, a lot of these typically the IP that they, they use in there was pretty much developed in-house, put together in-house, that's changing, right? It's really what you want to be able to do is reuse this stuff, and you can't necessarily do that the way they've been doing it in the past. Exactly. Yes. Let me show you. Let me explain how the uh, uh, packaging solution helps the engineer uh, with the addressing the challenges and the pains that they uh, see on each and when they are uh, integrating uh, the SOCs. So uh, the packaging solution offer a single source of truth a specification uh, to define the boundary of the IP, the structure of the IP, the memory map, uh, having this uh, in a single description that could be used for multiple usage by, by the different team, uh, generating automatically all the collaterals uh, needed uh, on that uh, on their desk. Second thing is uh, having these automation in, uh, in place uh, will help to shorten uh, the uh, process, so uh, they will be able to have uh, on-time uh, tip-out, successful tip-out, because uh, with the, this solution uh, also integrates built-in checkers regarding the compliance uh, to the standards, uh, having all these check uh, for the uh, IP exact grammar, uh, semantic, and also uh, Accelera uh, guidelines help you to have uh, a valid and clear and uh, yeah data that is uh, ready to be used at uh, design level. So having uh, improving uh, at the same time uh, the uh, quality of the generated design, shortening the timeline, this actually will give more time to the team to uh, have a faster innovation, so it's it will leverage their technical expertise, uh, giving them more time to uh, uh, focus on their core business and dream of uh, other things. And one of the things that you're wrestling with right now is these are AI chips to a large extent. Almost everything's AI these days or has some element of AI in it. And the AI models and LLMs are changing so fast that you really need to be able to take advantage of that and be able to build a system that is incredibly 
energy efficient as well as very fast. And the way that you're doing that is by saying, okay, what do we need to develop that's new and what do we need to reuse? Exactly. The, the, uh, with, with this kind of solution, you will focus on the core problem, on the specific problem. You don't need to, uh, to uh, spend more time on the integration itself or on the validation because these have been handled uh, in the beginning uh, when you package the IP. It's Afmelian. Thanks for a great explanation. Thank you for having me.